seems we live our third inside a dream. Want to tell you what's inside my head. Like, subscribe, and share this with all your friends because they're going to want to hear this. Hello, you guys. Welcome to my book review on The Red Market by Scott Carney. This is a, an interesting book, a bit macabre. It's about how there's this huge economy that's... Uh, sort of underground that nobody really talks about, but it um, it props up a lot of the functions of our world and a lot of the things that we depend on uh, get provided by this market here. Now, the, the book it mainly focuses on India, and that's for you know a specific reason. Scott Carney lives in India. He's a professor there. And it's very insightful, very, uh, very, uh, like a, a needed, a needed introspective look at what's going on here. He starts out talking about how there's these people who are pretty much grave robbing in India, and the government doesn't stop it. The government just doesn't stop it. And the people are, are saying, hey, <laughs> you know, we have we have our, our loved ones here and we put them to rest. We expect them, you know, to, to rest peacefully and to be there when we visit them. When we visit them, we don't expect to see an empty grave and, you know, in an IOU, like uh, in place of the, <laughs> of the body. But that's pretty much what they're finding. And... These people just rend, rend all the flesh from the bones through a chemical process, and it's it's very it's very uh, nuanced. Really, they really. they go through uh, very specific and just uh, methodical uh, process to to achieve what they're doing and once they get all the flesh removed they just d deposit it into the city sewers so all the chemicals and all the sewage is going uh the, the chemicals and the flesh and the everything is going right into the sewers right into the water supply one would one would suppose of course i mean unless they're just dumping it into the rivers and then it's still going into the water supply uh, so that's another another issue, another thing to think about. But they have these bones, and then they let them bleach in the sun, and then they put them all together in boxes, and then they sell them to universities. And these doctors in in America, and Canada, and in Europe buy them from these people. They don't even ask where they get these bones from. <laughs> they just they're just buying these skeletons. So they can teach their classes and everything about, you know, the joints and uh, the, the finer details of the, the, the skeleton. And, you know, of course, that, that they those students go on to help thousands of people, millions of people. And that's a good thing. But... We also have this issue on the other end. People don't want their grandfather. They don't want their grandfather's body to be molested, uh, in you know, in the sense of being disturbed after death, without their permission. So it goes on about the history of this practice, and how this has been going on for, for, for probably for. For not only centuries, but I could imagine this going on for millennia, uh, because we know that Leonardo da Vinci dug up bodies to analyze and to 
to learn about the anatomy. And the doctors of the of the 19th century, they're, they're infamous for digging up bodies in their local cemeteries and, and inspecting them, and that's how they learned. So it's a, it's a very, it's, it's, not, it's not well known, but uh, <laughs> it's probably not well known for a reason because nobody really wants to talk about that. It's a kind of a dark, dark subject matter, but it goes on in our society, and it's going on right now. And not only that, but he talks about something really important, which is child trafficking and human trafficking as well. And he talks about the blood banks and like uh, the nefarious uh, history behind them. People think that when they're donating blood, that it's just going to help people out and they're being a good citizen and everything. But they don't realize that a lot of times these, these hospitals might be profiting off of the, the plasma in their blood. And they're making profits. They're making profits off of this. It's a huge industry, uh, the, uh, the blood, the human tissue industry. And people have even been kidnapped and held in in dungeons in and I'm talking about India in recent times. Probably the case that I'm talking about goes back to around 2010, 2010 ish, a few decades back, maybe at the most. A couple of old farmers were kidnapped and held against their will, and they were repeatedly getting their blood drawn and sold to these hospitals by, by a man who made a business out of it. And the book goes on to say, if we were more transparent about where we got our tissue from, our human tissue, we wouldn't be facing situations like this because we would have to know who these donors were, what their names were, where, you know, where they're from, and it would eliminate a lot of the, uh, the black market, the red market activities that cause grief to people. And this is really serious. You know, nobody wants to be, imagine being kidnapped and, and held against your will and having your blood drawn like that, and the, the person's so weak that they can't even get up and, and escape if they wanted to. You know, they could leave the door wide open, but they, they're so weak from, from having no blood that they can't even move. That's a, that's a, that's a nightmare. And that's, that's what's going on. So this book shines a light on that. Kids are being kidnapped from, from families in third world countries. When we look at adoptions, uh, look at the fees that people pay for those adoptions. They sometimes go into uh, the tens of thousands to adopt a kid. Maybe uh, like they, it's really a significant amount of money to adopt a kid. And that is a market. People don't ask questions about, you know, what these fees are for. They just pay it. They just assume that it's on the up and up. But where there's a lot of money to be made, there is a huge, uh, there's a huge want to, to sort of, tip the scales, and do some shady activity. So, they kidnap kids in India and hold them in these, uh, these schools, these institutions. Sometimes parents would bring their children voluntarily 
to institutions for education, thinking that they're going to be bettered and that the kids are going to come back home with the knowledge that they couldn't afford to provide, that this, this school is going to be taking care of them. And, you know, it's a, it's a beneficial thing because the mother was too poor. Well, this school is going to help them out. This institution is going to be a benefit to society. No, <laughs> it's not the case. They're going to take that kid and they're going to auction the kid off to the highest bidder, more or less. And when I say auction, it's pretty much it's pretty much what it is. They take that kid, and whoever's willing to pay the most for the kid gets it. Whoever's whoever's willing to pay what they want, uh, the the fees that they want. The kid, if it's a light skinned child, it gets more. They they get paid more money. So that's just that's just how it is. It's just how it is over here. It needs to be more transparency in the human tissue market. Yeah. <laughs> really, <laughs> really, and it's wild that I'm that I'm taught that, that that this is a that this doesn't get more attention because this is something that goes on in society all the time. This is something that. You know, we we all probably know somebody who's had a surgery done, who's had to have an implant, or who's given something, who's given an implant. When we look at that, we can say, well, okay, at least this implant is going towards a good cause, this implant is going towards something, you know, uh, respectable. And in most cases, it is. In America, uh, it's all volunteer, so... So there's no black market, but the hospitals do make a lot of money, an exorbitant amount of money. And the book goes on to say, well, they're just guaranteeing people a couple more years of life, at, you know, at best. And all the the um, the anti-rejection drugs that they have to pump into these people, you know, weakens their immune systems, and it's not like they, they're just... Uh, Superman and ready to to take on the world and it's more like uh, more more like what common sense would dictate you're taking a foreign object and putting it into a, another body and that liver is not used to any of the you know that's it's not from that body it's not it's not their liver so now it has to you're forcing something that really was not made to work with that exact system. You're forcing it in there. So, I mean, but it it does prolong life, and you know, to each his own. But yeah, there there are complications after after we we do these surgeries and implants. It's not just a hundred percent perfect. You know, back to regular life. In all, you know, in all honesty, people, if we lived in a society that emphasized better care, you know, eating better, if we didn't have a McDonald's on every single block in our cities and a Burger King and a, and a, and a Krispy Kreme donuts and a, and a lard burger and, a, you know, liposuction plant like a... On every block, you know, <laughs> but at the same time, we live in America and we do what we want, right? It's commercialism. And I understand people want the freedom to do what they want, and there's a lot to be said for that, but we also have an obligation to take care of ourselves. Think about it honestly. I mean, We could be so much more productive as a society if we didn't have to expend these resources on on problems that could be avoided so easily. 
there's other countries, you know, I live in America myself, a lot of my viewers might not be from America, they might not see the same issues to such an extent, but, you know, heart disease, liver disease, people, you know, the, the rampant alcoholism and there's there's just so many ways that we could go about helping people and people really do want help people want to be aided people want something better for themselves they don't want to be just destitute and left alone and abandoned if people know how to do things in a better way people is People are really dying for that information. In all honesty, they literally are dying to know a better way to live. So, instead of profiting off of these this red market, these kidney transplants, these these countries where they they literally have people lining up to sell their kidneys to people who who just if they would have avoided avoided drinking a, a gallon of Coca-Cola every day wouldn't need another kidney. And people don't change their habits. Once they, once they get an implant, it doesn't mean that they're going to change their habits at all. They're going to continue living the same way that they lived before. So this book really shines a light on a lot of things that people need to change in reality. And if we just keep going the way that we're going, then it's all just going to... You know, it's going to implode upon itself because we're going to have a system of people who are just too weak to take care of themselves, and it's just going to, it's just going to create a, a, an economy of people, just living off the suffering of the masses, and pushing, pushing things like uh, pushing things that are just so bad for us onto people. Making us want these things by advertising it to us all day. So people can reap the, the profits. Look into it. You know, you, you want to know something interesting? The same cigarette companies that are selling you cigarettes are invested in cancer treatment facilities and chemotherapy. If you don't believe me, do the research yourself. I'm just here telling you the truth, and people are just going about like this is a joke. <laughs> You're killing yourself. You're killing yourself, and we're here watching you dying. And people are making money off of it. So, it's up to you what you want to do with your own life. But now that you have the knowledge... One step closer to freedom. It's been real. It's been true. Take care, my friends. What's good for me is good for you, but now it's time to go. Stay tuned to the modern mystic show. Sip it, do that. <laughs>